Welcome everybody to the cast from the coast. My name is Adam Oz and I'm joined as always by Josh Lambert, Aaron Peerless, and Tim Johnson. Tim, what are we talking about tonight? <sighs> we, I'm going to try to contain my excitement. We are speaking about the final installment of the never-ending series, Phantasm. <laughs> With Phantasm Five, or known as Phantasm Ravager. No! <laughs> Stay tuned. Ooh. All right, Tim, give us the synopsis. I don't want to, <laughs> but you want to know what you're going to get? You're going to get, you're going to get this. And this is said with so, so much love. Is it longer than Oblivion? Nope. <laughs> the final installment oh, of the long run Phantasm series. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> That's the synopsis. That's what you wow. need to know going into this film. I'm excited. I this don't know about anyone else, but I'm excited. Exactly, right? <laughs> wow. Oh, my okay. gosh. I, yeah, that was very insightful. <laughs> very, very you, insightful. Hey, it felt like reading that, it felt like I, I would watch this movie again because right? of that. I, well, just because of that, synopsis. just because of that, like it really grabs you by the balls and oh, says, "A wig lifted off your oh. shoulders." This is the final installment, the final one of the long-running Phantasm <laughs> series. The final—that's the key word here. That's the best final. part. Yeah, should have been named part. Phantasm's End. Would have been made even better. According Phantasm, to the last one. Phantasm, <laughs> the final <laughs> fucking part. movie. There's dot no... dot dot maybe. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? I can't I can't believe we made it. I can't believe Josh. We, we did it. Buddy. We're here. Until we they make the reboot the or part episode, six. The whole series will make sense. And we'll be yeah. looking back at ourselves and we'll be saying, Man, we were so silly. What a and couple what of silly idiot. gooses what they didn't understand idiot. that. Yeah. Man, we were stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and Tim's going, I'm not dumb. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. So we have Phantasm Five, otherwise known as Ravager, written by Don Coscarelli and David Hartman, and uh, directed by David Hartman. Not even Don Coscarelli this time around. Who the fuck's David Hartman? So he, wrote, he co-wrote this movie and directed it. Josh, he co-wrote this That'll movie and directed it. What else has he done? Um... I'll tell you he, right now. Uh, he he's an art department person for Bubba Hotep, and he directed some episodes of Transformers Prime. Yeah, Transformers Prime was dope. I don't know if so you guys Dan watched it. Buddy, yeah. Dan Buddy worked with him on Bubba Hotep, and he said, "Listen, I need another <clears throat> name to put on this film so people don't get suspicious. So people don't <laughs> shit on me this time." <laughs> oh man. Okay, so no, you know what it... actually happened? They were filming Bubba Hotep, and Dan's like. I got this crazy, kooky idea for another Phantasm movie, but it's no good. And his buddy's like, yeah, you should do it. You should do it, man. Egging him on. It's this guy's fault. <laughs> I bet you a thousand dollars you won't do it. Well, this I'll guy see has, ya. This guy has a, a lot of, um, uh, on his IMDb, a lot of animation credits um, for a supervising director um, and writer. 
um, he's done uh, the Godzilla cartoon from um, 2000. He did uh, Starship Troopers Chronicles called The Roughnecks in also 2000. He did uh, Astro Boy. He did Codename Embryo, Jackie Chan Adventures, uh, some some TV series called Laser Fart. What? <laughs> yeah. um, and then he then he did a bunch Fart? of uh, uh, um, Winnie the Pooh and Tigger. And he, yeah, he did a bunch of that. My friends Tigger and Winnie the Pooh. He did Transformers Prime, and then he jumped to Phantasm Ravager. And oh, now he's 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 legit back in um, the the last credit he has as a director is Transformers Robots in Disguise. So this guy's like mostly into animation. Well, that would explain that why all the fucking special effects in this movie were replaced with fucking computer-generated imagery and animation. Absolutely. Oh, I mean, don't direct real shit. I'm going to yeah, put animated be, shit in to here. To be fair, Adam, to be fair, to be people fair. work with what they're comfortable with, right? So if this guy got a large animation background, why not use animation? Now, did it work in the movie? No, it didn't. But... You work with what you know, right? You're being a little too fair, Tim. A little too the fair. The bad thing is, you know he was selling it to Dan. He's like, no, man, look, I, I'm an animator. I know my thing about anim. I know a thing or two about animation. And, and this can definitely be done. And Dan's like, oh, I don't know. You know, I, practical effects, usually the way I go, you know, it's, it looks better. Dawn. No, I was just going to yeah, let him keep guy. calling him Dan because it was just, it made <laughs> just about Dan. as much sense to do it. <laughs> look at people chiming in that are like cult followers and be like, what the fuck is going on? He can't even say Who's that fucking idiot? He doesn't even know his name. What an one idiot. can't say sexual, another one can't say this. That guy's so stupid, he doesn't know any of the fucking phantasm lore, and he's calling the director Dan. He's going to call him the Tiller Man in a moment. What an idiot. Yeah, but you know what? It almost, to me, Josh, it feels... You should have ran with it. Because it's like a big fuck you. <laughs> I'm not even going to get the director's name right. Yeah. I mean, Fucking like Dan. Said, just yeah. Keep going. When I'm doing the trivia, it's going to be Dan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Anyways. Okay. So, this movie stars, obviously, right out the bat. Uh, we got Reggie back as... You know, our, you know, we got Reggie Bannister back as Reggie. Uh, we got Michael Baldwin back as Mike. And we have the return of actually a series favorite of mine. We have Rocky appears back in this movie for a brief cameo. So it's kind of interesting. Um, and a bunch of other characters. Well, Jody's in the movie too. But uh, no, I'm not really going to go into any of the other characters because, you know, whatever. But let's talk about the story here for a minute. So the film itself kind of kicks off. <laughs> not as a direct, direct uh, push out from the end of the, the last movie. It kind of has like a little bit of a skip, so to speak, by like maybe days. But suddenly days, Reggie's a lot older, so is the tall man, because it's been many, many, many years, and they didn't spend any money on actually making these guys look any younger. Oh, which is time fun. Vortex, but... Time Vortex, man. Obviously. Time Vortex is... I, I mean, that. you know, Obviously. hey, in Evil Dead 2, Bruce saw the, the, the fucking evil tree and went white in the hair, so obviously, you know, yeah. Time Vortexes and Reggie time can just Vortex fucking... Time fuck shit up. ...turn right. 20 years older, so yeah. there we go. Makes sense. <sighs> Whatever. <laughs> so, so Reggie's basically running around in a desert, and he's still trying to find the tall man. Uh, yeah. He basically uh, catches a ride from a guy and realizes that the car that he's in is his and steals it back from the guy and goes back on his quest to actually find Michael and the tall man and everybody else. Um, but this movie plays this really weird mind game where it's jumping between alternate realities and dream <laughs> sequences. Tim. So now we don't have just time vortexes. We have alternate realities and dream sequences. Pa parallel. Parallel realities, dream sequences, alternate dimensions. You can keep it straight. <laughs> right? what, what what he said. So there's different, different realities that are being portrayed here where things like uh, Phantasm as it is that we know didn't actually happen. Which goes right to the end of the movie and they happen That's in a the parallel system. That is the best reality to live in. That's the 
Oh, man. <clears throat> um, the movie takes place throughout different locations as... Just like in the, the, the last couple Phantasms, Reggie's just kind of going into different towns and they're kind of like, you know, abandoned and shit and he's trying to find the tall man and, 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 and everything else. He ends up basically finding uh, some uh, lurking... Jawas, as we like to call them, I guess, and realizes that he's close on the tail of the tall man, uh, and uh, they get into a lot of problems, and it jumps to yet another fucking dream sequence, and uh, it becomes a little bit of an alternate nightmare world, one of these sequences, so this is where the movie starts to really take a fucking nose dive. This movie portrays times when Reggie's looking for the tall man, so it's a continuation of what we've already seen from 1 to 4. Then there's a storyline where Reggie's just an old man who's basically being visited by Mike and Jody in like a like a hospice, basically. He's dying, as it is. He's, he's an old guy in the hospice. Yeah, like it's all in his head. It's all in his head. And then we have yet another timeline, which is... The fact that we've now gone into the future, kind of like the description that Tim gave for uh, Phantasm's End, which was supposed to be part four. Now we have the fact that the, the tall man has an entire fucking army behind him, and we enter a CGI world with the shit special effects, the equivalent of Spawn from the 90s, if we can imagine that, folks. Um, not very well done. And some really, really piss poor sequences on the streets showing people fighting these creatures. Mm. Uh, I'm just trying to push that out of my head because it, it, was, it was terrible at the time to see. I remember watching Ravager and going, oh, I thought I liked these movies. <laughs> the, in the end, a lot of what I saw for the storyline for Ravager was hard to swallow because if you think that the other movies are confusing they try to tell you in this movie that it's basically that these three main parallel universes all truly exist and Reggie somehow connects them all and he's actually self-aware of all three versions of reality the first thing in the entire series that actually is explained and I can absorb into my brain and even though it's extremely convoluted make sense in the reality of what they've set out. This is yeah. the first time in the entire series that this has occurred. Holy. Whew. Let me write that down. Yeah. <laughs> so time. it is It is an interesting plot point, and that plot point, if, if that was the kind of story plot point that there was, and we mixed it in with some decent visual effects, like in the last couple of movies, they might have actually had a bit of a winner on their hands, in my opinion. The story for this even though it was a little bit harder to follow when you sat down and you thought about it, it was interesting because they played on the fact that there was more than just one reality at stake. It's almost like the tall man was, he's an interdimensional being and we've discussed this before, but not just interdimensional, almost like inter parallel universe, let's say, and he can control shit from everywhere. Let's say it, Tim. To quote a very wise man, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> that's me. He's quoting me. Uh, that, that's, you're the wise man. Um, there is a character named Chunk in this movie that's of interest. That's and, Chunk, and all I could yeah. and all I could think of was uh, was you know Chunk from the Goonies. Goonies. Uh, I just wanted him to do the truffle shuffle, and that would have made this movie <laughs> a lot fucking better. So I'll just go with that. Yeah, um, that guy. He did have a fucking attitude. And, and he was hitting on Rocky the whole time. I know. I was like, what? Fuck off. Dick. Um, <laughs> Dick. Do you guys got anything else to add to the story? No. Uh, I, <laughs> not, this no. Is the first time in the entire series I was able to follow what's going on. It was extremely yeah. convoluted and stupid, but I, I'm just thankful that my little pea brain was able to follow the storyline for once. <clears throat> but isn't that because... Uh... Don didn't direct it. Yeah, Dan had nothing to do with it. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, we'll leave it at that. I, 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 no, but honestly, I th I think that's why someone else's vision kind of prevailed. And well, no, 
because it's still convoluted. So they took all Dan's ideas and they said, okay, this is pretty fucked up. But then they found a way to make it make sense. <laughs> that makes sense to me, I guess. <laughs> all right, Josh, I want to hear your notes. <clears throat> do you hear do your you notes do? on the final Phantasm movie? <laughs> this is uh, the notes from my first viewing of the final installment of the Phantasm series. It took place August 11th. 2020 at 7 32 p.m this is it it's almost sad to see it end was my <laughs> first number before i uh, started to rap <laughs> uh fucking badass reggie intro scene nailed it should could sure use some rocket pops right about now That's straight out says say, yeah. that the tall man is a shapeshifter that actually answers one of the long-standing questions of mine of the lady in question from the first Phantasm. It's just Reggie versus the tall man, the ultimate fi- finale. Some fuckwad jacked Reggie's car. Sounds like they didn't have a budget for it to me. <clears throat> Never mind. There it is. Fuck Reggie is hard. He just offloaded it into his glove box. You motherfuckers. Reggie is in a nut house and he has dementia. Fuck off. This ruins the show. Hate it. The doctor says he has to keep you engaged. Is the tall man the doctor? The old Reg is at it again. He straight up pulled Pennywise's pickup line. Quote, so still trying to make sense of this story of yours. Well, it's complicated. No fucking kidding. At this point, they're so meta, I'm on board. I'm, I'm all in. Reg can't remember his name. Maybe he does have dementia. Fuck, Reg, you old sleepy bastard. She was thirsty for it, for sure. This was your in. And I wrote, aw, the tall man. With a little crying emoji. He looks so old and frail. I can't wait to watch some YouTube video explaining this series. Because I'm way too much of a fucking moron to understand what the fuck is going on right now. Reg is packing. I love that they kept the nunchucks. Did the film quality just drastically change? So, is there any truth? To the fact that this was started out as like a fan film project no uh, this 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 movie was started out literally just as a let's keep it lower budget follow-up to kind of throw some of the storyline to a completion some of it feels an awful lot like just like a reunion fan film so i'll be i'll be frank about this Gigi and reggie and Don are all like almost like equal owners in the intellectual property in this. There was a fan film about four years ago that was done for Phantasm. And the crew that made it made the mistake of renting out a local theater in their hometown and basically asking people to pay $2 or $5 to go see the movie just to support them to get back some of their money for the budget. They called the fucking dogs of war on them. And basically had it, like, shit-canned. So, the idea of a fan film, there's a there's a good chance that maybe this is something to do with, you know, an idea that somebody had or started off as an idea for a fan film or whatever have you. But, in the end, Don and Gigi and Reggie are very, very controlling of the actual property involved. Maybe so... fan film's not the right word, but it, it just <laughs> felt like it was like a reunion film that they did just for shits and giggles, much less so than, like, a studio-produced film. Okay. Anyway, I can see that, yeah. Uh, how many fucking timelines am I following at this point? Books, I don't need. What I need is a fucking four-barrel shotgun is what I need. Amen. I the Mega Ball. And I can only imagine seeing this series... And loving it, growing up. Getting to see one last performance of the tall man so many years later. 
Almost brings a tear to my eye. You know, despite the flaws in this film, some of the props are actually pretty cool. I definitely want two steel bullards in my garden now, and a couple of death balls would be pretty neat. I think I'm losing it. I can't tell what's real anymore. Quote, you and me both, Reggie. You and me both. Mad Max timeline. Okay. Shit. Red exploding death balls. Kind of late to be adding a new kind of death ball, but I ain't even mad, to be honest. Alien virus that the death ball, that the death toll has huge, that has caused civil unrest and riots. He fucking bazookered the tall man. Bazookered. <laughs> Bazooka. I hope he gives us one last boy. <clears throat> the gold ball is back. There are 10,000 dozen tall mans in multiple dimensions but it's all still the same tall man badass car upgrade it's Jody little to the left I guess that's our Reggie I wrote, don't you die on us Reggie don't you die dedicated in the memory of Angus Scrim well, why would you not have an after credit scene of the tall man biggest mistake of the series those are yeah. my notes of the final installment of Phantasm 5 alright <clears throat> good notes interesting um, not really as much negativity in these notes as, as you what noticed we might that, have seen. Did you? I, yeah. I noticed that yeah. I, I'm wow. gonna drop a bomb on you guys this is oh. my favorite Phantasm holy shit Ooh. fuck oh, okay. there we go even better than part three, apparently. According to Josh. Hey guys, I'm Felissa Rose, Angela from Sleepaway Camp. And you're listening to They Cast from the Coast. Yeah! <laughs> All right, Aaron. Yes, drop sir. some drop some effects <laughs> love on us. <clears throat> All right, SP effects. Gigi Bannister once again. She's the makeup coordinator on this film. Doug Field. He was uh, the fellow uh, that was responsible for the prefabrication of a lot of the effects that you see in this film. Uh, Rebecca Hurwitz, she did all the burn effects in this. The the Phil Askren uh, was part of the film crew, and um, Robert Kurtzman Creature Corpse was involved with this film to some capacity. No, no giant names in there like Kurtzman or Berger or things like that, but. The Creature Corpse, Robert Kurtzman Creature Corpse, were involved in this film. They, they should um, be apprentices. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Um, get yourself some credits, right? That's right. I love the instant uh, continuation of the story. I know it's delayed a little bit because Reg is older, but I like how he kind of walked out into the for into the into the desert. And then he's walking towards the camera in Ravager. So in Oblivion, he's walking away, going to go in the same outfit, and he comes back, and his outfit's all screwed up and burnt. He's got the weapon. I love how that continued like that. That was one of my favorite parts of this, this film. And that, that begs to point, like I said earlier, it's like, it is a continuation, but some time has passed. Like, he's worse right. for wear walking out of the desert at this point. And you visually see, you visually see the age on them because I mean this is this is a, quite a while between films, right? Um, yeah. So um, it, not too bad. I mean, he still looks like he's got the same amount of weight, maybe a little bit more weight on him or whatever. But it was still a pretty good transition, I thought. That's what um, happens when you eat sand in the desert for so long. 
<laughs> Reggie is a badass taking his car back. I thought his one liner in the car was actually pretty cool. Um, the whole that whole scene in the car I thought was was a one because, you know what this the whole story, and and Josh, I, you know I'm going to enlighten you here a little bit. The whole movie is about the car, bud. That's all it is. What? Just concentrate on the car. <laughs> That's got no wonder you noticed the fucking <laughs> hubcaps changing. Right. The That's consistency. Right. The car is always the, the car is the most consistent part of the whole the whole series. Right. The most consistently inconsistent part too. Right. Everybody loves that car. I, mean, I love that car. It's a good car. Yeah. Great old age makeup on Reg, um, just with color. So old. when he's yeah, well no. Um, because in, <laughs> he is old, but in parts of the movie, he's, he's got to look more run down and more, you know, a, a lot more aged and, and, and yeah, they took his makeup off and he's tired. Right. Yeah. And you know what? That could very well be what they, <laughs> what they did. Um, but I think they added some old age spots and things with yeah. maybe an illustrator palette or, or even some cream makeup and then they powdered it. Um, but I thought that the makeup on that level was really good because it made me think that maybe he is, maybe this whole story is about him having dementia. Maybe that's all it is. And it's all over the place. And we're not I meant was, to know ready for that to be the ending. I was ready. I was so ready. I yeah. Thought, oh, it makes sense. It's just the delusions of a crazy person. <laughs> um, Reggie's glasses, uh, have a matte finish. So when he's sitting in the vehicle, um, I noticed that they put a matte finish over his sunglasses so not to reflect the crew and the camera in his glasses um, as he picks up another female, right? Puts the glasses down and it's like, I'm like, who has matte finished sunglasses? Would you be able to see through those? I, I don't know. Right? So I'm thinking like, why, if you do all the CG work in this film, why are you putting a matte finish on sunglasses? Why don't you just take care of the camera crew in post? And budget take... was already gone. Oh, so they couldn't take a minuscule picture out of that. Nope, budget was already gone. Sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Get some fucking spray paint and matte spray paint the fucking glasses. <laughs> um, Reg indicates he has been fighting the tall man for years. That doesn't make sense because this is supposed to all be taking place over, like, what? No, there, you know, there, was, there was a big months. no, no. To me, no. no it it's was a big years. jump in times. So there was a big jump oh, in time. Oh no, 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 boys! That's where you're wrong. That's where you're wrong. This started, and because of all the time shifting and the the shit going on with the time frames, this has only taken place over a matter of months, not dude, years. The first film, the dude, the, he was a little kid. Yeah. Exactly. So it's been years. Unless he's been through some of the time vortexes, correct? Uh, what are you talking about? Uh, <laughs> it starts. It hurts. Mike? Doesn't make sense. Doesn't make What's sense. What's the Trust little me. kid's name, Mike? Yes. Yeah, it starts. He's like 10, 12 years old. Right. At the end, he's like 30. Right. That's years. That's years. But if he's going through a vortex, a time vortex, like Ash in Evil Dead, yeah, but he, he doesn't. He ages, and then yeah, he goes you know, through a vortex. How do you know he doesn't? How do you know he doesn't what? Go through the time vortex. Because it shows him aging! <laughs> You're echoing. <laughs> You're there there are yelling so loud it's echoing he back. Certain, he, gets, he gets accosted by the tall man in the tall man. Accosted? Man's yeah. He gets pulled in by the tall man into the tall man's world. Does that yeah. stop time in, in the world that's taking place with Reg? What? No, he exactly. ages, bud. Exactly. I, you're on glue. Nope. I don't understand why this is the hill you're deciding to die on with this film. This doesn't make sense to me because... Reggie's been fighting the tall man for years. We're period. only following Reggie's story in this whole thing. Correct? No, not correct. There's multiple characters that you follow. Right, but the main camera, the main character that you're always focused on is Reggie, his car, and the shenanigans that are going on around it, right? Wrong, but continue. <laughs> if it cuts to a scene, uh, is Reggie not usually in it? I don't... What? In all yeah, the movies put he's, together. He's one of the main characters, yeah. Exactly. So is Mike. Right, but Mike's not the main character in this. Reggie is. 
See what I'm saying? I, okay. I'll acknowledge that <laughs> Reggie is a main We're not character. Following. We are not following Jody. We're not following Mike's timeline or Jody's timeline. We know that they get sucked in, and the tall man is after Mike, and okay. Jody is put in one of the so balls. So explain like, to me been, this. Yeah. Do you think Reggie is just lying when he says, I've been fighting the tall man for years? It's like, oh, gotcha, Reg, no, you liar. It was a mishap. I think it was a mishap that that should not have been written in there. Because now that confused me. I but was like, that's not right. Send a letter to Dan and let him know. <laughs> that okay. did not make sense to me. So okay. if you if you find, a, I found a little bit of information that describes the timeline here. Years is correct, but it's minuscule years. Even right. though he's looking old, it has to do with time jumps or whatever the fuck's going on. Mm -hmm. 1977, Jody and Mike's parents die. 1978, the events of Phantasm 1 occur. So the first movie kind of talks about both time periods. At the end, or sorry, at, in fact, Phantasm 2, the actual doctors that are talking to Mike state that he's been in treatment for years. Because mm -hmm. he's about 19 years old in that movie. So in part two, he's roughly 18, 19 years old. That's mm -hmm. years in that case. Uh, now, granted, Reggie wasn't fucking fighting the tall man in those periods, but there's years there, people. Um, and then between 85 and 88 is when Reggie comes back to take Mike and brings him to the house and, and the house fucking explodes and shit like this. And basically the rest of it takes place in like 88. So even Ravager apparently takes place in 1988. What? Yeah. That's this is this is the timelines that have been written up that people are stating this is this is where you where this is where it sits. See, that makes more sense than right. It, it does make more sense. Um, so there's there is some time, but there's some really there's weird a little bit of time. going on. There's a little right. bit of time. Right. Basically okay. 10 years, but only so many of it he actually is fighting. Right, right. Okay, I can accept that. Okay. Um, so if he does refer to years, okay. I just didn't know, because I, I, I didn't read any blogs or anything like that, and I didn't know if it was months, because he starts fighting the tall man in number one, and it just goes through the phases. It doesn't matter when the movies were shot, the technical part of the whole no, know, I get, a film can be shot in 2000 and set in the 80s that's right. not my issue right 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 so it was it was strange to me because it started and he was on the road fighting or trying to get the trying to get to the tall man and do all this stuff but it, the the years didn't make sense to me in the timeline they didn't um that's Quantum just mechanic. my just don't yeah worry about it. <laughs> it's just my own take on the whole on the whole thing um let's see here Red strikes out again, lol, because he does. <laughs> the old redhead strikes right out. Mm -hmm. look, uh, spheres look very strange due to CGI. Good example of practical and CGI effects right there. Let me tell you what a debauchery they did to the spheres in this movie. I, I If they had just done the practical thing like they had done through all the rest of the movies, instead of changing it in this one movie, my my outcome at the end of this probably would have been a little better. But to see how cheesy the CG was with these spheres, I, it pissed me off in this. Right? You go so far, and then you change it like that? What are you thinking? The director was more comfortable with animation. Yeah, well, you know, he I think he did that the wrong way. He should not have done that. He should have stuck. Even if he did everything else in CG and kept the balls, man. Kept the chrome balls. It's Crap. all about the balls. It is all about the balls. The balls in the car. The balls uh, in the car. <laughs> Awesome effects on Don in the bedroom with the spear in the head. Um, Dimitri got messed up. Nothing like a sphere to the neck. Uh, that was pretty good. I love when spheres attack. You know, they get the drill. <laughs> and everything. I think those are really cool. Blood effects and everything. Nice special effects on Apparition. Uh, the woman in the mausoleum. I thought that was really cool, too. Uh, and the cadaver in the mortuary of the uh, tall man. That was really cool. Mm. Um, nice burnt corpse in the hospital. 
uh, the body freezer is what I have marked here, uh, and good effects when Mike uh, is sewing up his own head. So when he's got the and you can see the the needle going into the gelatin or the uh, the prose transfer, right? It's pulling the flesh, and it looks really it looks really cool, right? Uh, Chunk's hand looked great, uh, good burning. You know how you get the severed digits and stuff, and it was all burned up and everything. I thought that was really cool. Yeah, it was just a mound of of gelatin or whatever, but it still looked pretty good, and it was colored quite well. Those are my notes. Okay. <laughs> Tim, I do reckon it is time. Time is it? Time is it? For what? Trivia time. With Tim! (sighs) (laughs) Fuck. According to the book, Phantasm Exhumed, filming. I don't know, it's a book. Filming on Phantasm Rad- Rav- yeah, Ravager first began late 2008, where it was originally envisioned as a spin off web series about Reggie. And the web is- webisode footage was eventually expanded upon with new footage that appeared, uh, the featured appearances by the main cast, and would become a feature length movie. And given that explains a limited why I theatrical it felt like release. A fan film. Yeah, because it was kind of. Kind of. Uh, at around the 21 minute mark, the hospital bed scene alongside Reggie Bannister was the last scene Angus Scrim filmed as the tall man. Oh. A mock up DVD with the title Phantasm Ravager appears next to a television in Don's earlier film, John Dies at the End. Okay. What happens in that movie? Mm-hmm. It's an interesting read. Uh, with no prior production news, Phantasm Ra- Ravager was announced to the world as a completed project on March 26, 2014. A teaser trailer was released the following day. Angus Grimm was shown Phantasm Ravager shortly before he died. This is the only film not to be directed by Don. And at around the 20 minute mark, the blanket Don puts on Reggie in the cabin is the same one Michael Baldwin's character had on his bed in the original Phantasm. Hmm. At 85 minutes long, it's the shortest of all Phantasm films. (laughs) <laughs> the first Phantasm film in 18 years the last film was 1998 Phantasm 4 Oblivion the end credits montage show, see, ugh, show scenes that were cut from the final film it's the only Phantasm film to have a mid credit scene Reggie's occupation in the first film as an ice cream man and coincidentally, a real ice cream truck would often drive by on the set with its music playing, forcing production to stop and wait for it to pass. That's some good trolling. Yeah. At uh, 19 minutes, the song Reggie plays on his guitar while creating a song for Dawn is the same tune he and Jody played together in the original Phantasm. During their jam session, uh, several years after the movie's release, Bill Thornberry finished the song, which was tited, titled Sitting Here at Midnight. <laughs> yeah. The Plymouth Barracuda featured in this film is not the same car featured in Phantasm 4. That car was a convertible, whereas the one in Ravager had a hard top up, as in seen in the original Phantasm. And finally, at around 30 minutes... During the scene where Mike is visiting Reggie at the rest home, Reggie says the line, There's a new threat, Mike. Have you seen it? This is probably a reference to the song, Have You Seen It?, performed by Reggie Bannister, which plays over Phantasm 4's Oblivion end credits. Hmm. Cool. Okay. Not a lot of trivia tonight on that movie. Um, Oh, there was. I just didn't. I'm done. (laughs) <laughs> okay fair enough fair enough so sure. uh, let's just 
jump right into our final thoughts and give this movie a good old review, ladies and gentlemen. Josh. Yes, sir. You go first, please. I really like this one. This princess brings it all in for me. I, As someone who doesn't like the series, I can emphasize with someone who loved the series and this got to be their final farewell to the tall man. I think that's amazing that he got to come out of retirement and play one last time for the fans. And like I said, this it has very much a pandering to fans, in my opinion. This feels very much like a fan film. And to find out that it was originally going to be some webisodes that they filmed, and then they expanded it, that makes perfect sense to me, honestly. Uh, I, I dig the parallel universes being thoroughly explained, and explains for some of the wonkiness in the series, even though the whole series in totality is stupid and makes no sense to me. At least this kind of attempted to do something. Uh, the budget wasn't there, and unfortunately the effects were garbage because they were all video effects. Um, but out of solidarity with the fact that I hope one day Bruce Campbell, when he's nice and old, comes out of retirement and just does one last hurrah for me. I, I'm going to give this movie an R. I'm going to recommend you watch this film. Wow. R. Wow. Okay. Tim. Okay, so uh, over the, 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 the past four um, reviews that we've we've done on this series, I've I've a lot of highs and lows, mostly lows. Um, I didn't rate the first two very good. I think three was the one that I rated the best. Four was horrible. Um, I'm not even. It, my point is, is I'm not a fan of this series, and even I was offended by this movie and how they ended it. Like, like I'm so happy that I, it's it's over, but like. It just felt kind of like, I don't know, man. Like, it just didn't feel like, it just didn't feel like the rest of them. Like, the, the, the that's the best it, part. <laughs> no, but it, it wasn't though. Like, I, it, it was a little easier to follow than, you know, the other two, it, the other four. But, um, this, I mean, if I was a fan, this movie sucked. This movie sucked. It sucked. Like it sucked. It was not it was not a good send off. It 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 sucks that like, you know, um I don't know, it just sucked. It just sucked. It was dis it was dis I was disappointed. And like I thought like at least it would have been consistent consistently bad. Consistently bad. Um like all the other four of them have been like I, I it's my opinion that I didn't like them but I'm not saying that like the movies were 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 shit they just they just weren't my thing right but this one was like just bad man it was bad like I didn't like I didn't like uh, the CG at all um, I didn't I, I, I just I felt like it just wasn't the same it just wasn't the same. It was a different shitty movie. It just wasn't the shitty movie that I've watched over the last four. It was like a, a different shitty movie. Um, and like I've read some things where like you know a lot of a lot of fans are really fucking disappointed in it. And um, you know um, a lot of people waited a long time for this movie and you know didn't think it was going to happen. And that's what you got. Um, and I just feel like they kind of bit off a little bit more than they could chew and they didn't have the budget for it. And uh, yeah, I just, I thought it, I thought it sucked. It was messy and unnecessary more so than the other movies have been. Um, I'm obviously going to rate this an S for shit. I wanted to rate it no comment because that's how bad it was, but yeah, we have a rating, be... no comment. Yeah. Yeah. No. We don't yep. officially. <laughs> yes, we do officially. There's a little fucking thing made for it. It was an what? official 
rating. We've no never implemented it. I would have gave that to I've Cannibal done Holocaust it. if I knew that. I've done it in an episode. No, no comment. Never. I would have given a Holocaust. Oh, the movie you didn't watch. No. What? That was a new com, a new a new thing implemented into our rating system. Yeah. Okay. It was. That was what was that? Butterfly kisses. He didn't even watch the fucking thing. Butterfly kisses. All right, Aaron. Uh. All right. Well, I I agree with the you know sentimentally agree with uh, what Tim <laughs> has kind of put forward here. <laughs> you not disappointed? I was disappointed as a Phantasm fan. I was over. I as can't true... believe. That. Fantastic. It doesn't fan. make sense. It's like if a shitty Star Wars movie came out, and they're like, "Yeah, but you got I, one more." I, that's true. We ended up getting three I'm, more. I'm not yeah. even. Yeah. I just started, started like five seconds ago. Yeah, but you got more. <laughs> yeah, and I broke up with Star Wars for a year and a half. Oh, talk to anybody about it. No. It's true. So I I agree um, that. You know, as as a fan of this series, that it it had its it had its like terrible terrible things in it that just the CGI for me, I just I can't get around that. Um, I feel like they they chinsed out on it. They didn't they didn't put the money towards you know what what they should have, and I think that because they had a different director come in, it did have a different feel to it. It did have a different outlook to it and a different confusion, maybe, is the word for it. I don't know. Um, what I did like about it was that it was a little more modern. Um, it had some some really good artistic shots here and there that didn't include the CGI. Um, and I like how they implemented a bunch of the old scenes and made a story out of it throughout this film and it made sense with the younger actors way back when they kind of cut it together to try and make it so it made sense to people that were having that were struggling with uh the fact that this is all over the place and if you don't follow it sharply or your your you know creative imagination doesn't go um that you can get lost in this really quick but I thought that it was ingenious with a lot of the scenes that they put in with, with the when they, the actors were younger when they filmed the first one and the second one, um, and they, I thought that was seamless. Put it that way through that, and I, and I can't give it an S for shit because of that. Um, also, can't give it an S for shit because this was Angus Scrim's last hurrah <laughs> on the on 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 camera and on film, right? Like, if uh, Mark Hamill was diagnosed tomorrow with terminal cancer and he's got a month to live, mm -hmm. and they pumped out the shittiest Star Wars ever fucking written, but he gets one last hurrah, you wouldn't go watch that and be pumped? Well, if it had Jar Jar Binks in it, no. It could be the fucking origin story of Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> and fucking Mark Hamill gets one last hurrah? I don't... I'll leave that I, up I'm with a spoon. Gonna, I'm not even going to answer that because they will never do... An origin story of Jar Jar Binks. Yeah, ever. Never say never. But... <laughs> <laughs> You've cursed us, Aaron. You've cursed us. They better not. Man, that would just flop. I think. Um, I'm not gonna like. Like I said, I'm not gonna like completely shit on it. But uh, I struggled with with the way that they did the the spheres in this. Um, I like the straight makeup that they did throughout this whole thing to make Reggie look uh, like he was confused and, and older. And you're right, Josh. Maybe they did wipe off all the makeup, and that's what he looked like. Um, you could be right on that, right? Maybe it was his own natural look. Um, I'm going to give this... I'm still going to give this a PG. I'm rocking okay. the PG on it. Yeah. Rocking the PG. Um, because it, it, it kind of finished off what I was... It didn't finish it off to my liking, but at the same time, it's a phantasm film. I love the other ones. I just, uh, it, this wasn't my favorite film out of the series. Okay. Fair yeah. enough. Fair enough. Sorry for the ramble. Nope. It's all good. <laughs> um, I have a little bit of a love-hate with this movie. 
Uh, and I agree with some of what everybody said here. So, Josh, I agree. This movie had some, mo some more coherent nature to the storyline, but I think that it has to do with a fresh set of eyes coming in and writing and directing. It tried to make something out of the last bunch of movies, which, in my opinion, wasn't a bad thing, doing the whole multiple storyline, or multiple parallel, you know, universes and, and, and stories that are happening, and the common denominator being Reggie in various forms. It, If you look at it, it kind of makes sense going back to thinking about why all of a sudden Phantasm 2, Reggie was like, dude, that was all in your head. That never, the first, you know, the shit that happened in the first movie basically never happened. Because it's almost like you're skipping to a different timeline at that point. Like, there's a different parallel universe that's being talked about or dealt with in this one. Um, and, and it does explain quite a few other things that happened in the series and, and, and stuff like that. I thought it was a good fresh take on it. It, it was good to try something different. However, the thing that pisses me off the most about this movie is the fact that for all the times that they could get practical effects to work really well, they went way overboard with the CGI to the point where there's literally entire horrendous fucking scenes where it's just CGI hell landscapes with really shitty looking scenarios and fights going on. It's like a green screen, Adam. You're right. It's like yeah. a standard green screen. They're like, uh, you know, like, and yeah. it doesn't even track properly when you're actually watching them. They're, like, no. jumping. Like, when the camera's panning, like, the people are, like, jumping and shifting and shit from their... Yeah. It wasn't even well done. Um, whoever did the CGI in that, shame on you. Shame on you because you did bad and you should feel bad. That's just the way that it is. Um, in terms of practical effects, the CGI outweighs everything in terms of effects in this movie. And it's really hard to... to, to to, to, to love the special effects, to be honest. They're there, but it's... It, it just kind of feels pushed. Like, we had to do something. Because we couldn't do everything in CGI. Even though the director probably fucking felt that they could have. They're over-encumbered with CGI. That's yeah. yeah, it drowns it. It drowns it out. Everything gets drowned out when, when I'm thinking about the CGI and the piss-poor, you know, scenarios in this movie that way. Um, just on the merit of the fact that there's something decent that they did with the storyline, and it was, in my opinion, somewhat of a of a nice farewell. I mean, in this movie, technically, if you go by the fact that the final, not the final scene in the movie, but the semi-final scene where one of the timelines, Reggie, dies in the hospice, you know what I mean? If you kind of go with that... As kind of like the finale to the situation. It's kind of a peaceful outing for the movie. You have Reggie dying. And then you have this other Reggie that's kind of like, I still got work to do. And there's there, there's kind of almost like a, it, it, there is a relief. It kind of does feel pseudo ending at this point. You know, it you don't know if he'll ever come across the tall man. They could literally have opened this up to... The fact that the tall man no longer exists and Reggie's going to go and fight injustices of whatever else he can fucking fight. Oh, I'm, I'm boring Josh now. <laughs> Josh Wrapping up, up my perfectly. fucking thoughts, apparently. <laughs> um, <laughs> shit. Oh, all right. In the end, I can't shit entirely on this movie, but I can't give it a great rating by any means because... It just, it's too fucking much what they did almost to purposely piss on this movie. All they needed, literally, yeah, I'm sorry. Hey, part. we got this really good idea. Let's just piss all over it with the shittiest CGI since Spawn <laughs> in the 90s. Hey, that sounds like a good fucking idea. You're an animating hey, guy. Are you so talking for about, like the Todd McFarlane Spawn? Like the one with Michael J. White as Spawn? Fuck, that was fucking ILM fucking CG, bud. And it was terrible. Have you seen yeah. it lately? Yeah. Doesn't mean it was good. <laughs> ILM. They were, they were producing. Not, Dude, like, ILM like also Kate produced Jurassic Park. Park just before that. And Jurassic yeah. Park today fucking stands up. Just because it was ILM doesn't mean it's, you know, the proper. Anyways. Rate rate it's the, the fucking B movie, team. Adam. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm going to give this movie a PG. 
pretty good. Just based on the story and and, and how I feel it kind of did wrap it up a little bit and end it. So sorry for the rant. I bored people. Everybody fucking yawned, but it was my time to say something. It was my time. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> I sound right. like a goonie. <laughs> this is our time to shine. Down here. Down here. <laughs> Down here. That's right. <laughs> All right, guys. This has been a very eye-opening and intriguing episode, and I think we're all kind of happy that we can move on, knowing that we have completed the series until the reboot or part six magically fucking appears one day right. and in which that case we will have to do it because reboot. we're completionists so Listen, let's this go with that in costume catelli guy just needs to put his ideas costume catelli <laughs> i'm done with him <laughs> no more this. ideas he'll just be a producer on the next one so all right gentlemen Thank you, everybody, for tuning in and watching this episode with us. Do not forget to check out that we produce weekly content on our Facebook group as well as our YouTube group, uh, Misunderstood Our Company. Like, share, and subscribe to everything that we do. Please check it all out. We also produce audio copies of all of our content every week, just the same, on all the major podcasting platforms, including but not limited to uh, Amazon Music, Google Play, iTunes, and Spotify. We're also on Patreon. Open up your hearts and your wallets. And until next time, Josh. It's over. It's finally <laughs> over. Aaron. Rest in peace, Mr. Scrim. Tall man forever. Very true. R.I.P. Anger Scrim. Tim Johnson. It's over. It's finally over. It's never over. No. Oh, in this fucking house, oh. in this house, it's over. <laughs> oh man, not even a stay spooky from you, Tim. Yes. Not even in the mood for it. Yeah, stay spooky, whatever. <laughs> I love the attitude. That's perfect. Okay. Till next time. Just, people. You know what, Adam? Adam, you you can edit good. Just just fucking insert. Just slap another. Just stay a slap spooky. like. All of a sudden, <laughs> some random. Stay spooky, everybody! And it's like, he's, yeah, yeah. he's got From, fucking like, a couple hair years ago when shit. my beard's really long. Yeah. No <laughs> continuity whatsoever. Yeah, no, do that. I'm not editing it. No this stays in no the entire fucking episode. No I will. See you later, folks. <laughs> Good night!